I, uh, I want to start off by saying to you that I'm still growing and that the teachings that I've shared in times past on the subject of tithing were not correct. Say amen. People are saying Dr. Creflo Dollar should refund all the tithes before they take him serious. Are they the savior of the world? Is his repentance to them or to Jesus? Is he accountable to them or to Jesus? He doesn't even need to talk about the fact that his teachings are wrong. If not that he wants to be accountable to Jesus and to the people who are looking up to him. He, does, he doesn't owe you an explanation. You, your own mistakes that you make and correct, who do you owe explanation? The only reason why he has to speak openly before the church is because of his responsibility as a leader who has led people and if he has made a mistake, he owes them that apology. Not because they are the ones that, that are going to determine whether he is forgiven or not. We have the gift of forgiveness in Christ. And if a pastor taught what he shouldn't have taught and he discovers it is wrong, it means the people under his leadership are safe because it means our pastor is growing. It is a sign of growth to say I was wrong, I am sorry, this is right, and he shows you from the scriptures. So we commend what Dr. Creflo Dollar is doing. And we thank God for him. And we see more coming to this light. Oh, glory to God. I say we see more coming to this light. And we keep praying. We don't stop praying until we all come. Until we all, how many of us? Until we all come to the unity of the faith, which is the knowledge of the Son of God. Praise God forevermore. And, and when, he, when he started the statement, he said, I am still growing. Okay, so that 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 already covers everything. I uh, I want to start off by saying to you that I'm still growing, and that the teachings that I've shared in times past on the subject of tithing were not correct. Then he now says I was wrong about tithing. All right, so. Everything I have thought on Titan, every book I have written on title, on Titan, destroy all of them. And today I stand in, in humility to correct some things that I've taught for years and believed for years, but could never under, understand it clearly because I had not yet been confronted with the gospel of grace which has made the difference I won't apologize because if it wasn't for me going down that route I would have never ended up where I am right now but I will say that I have no shame at all at saying to you throw away every book every tape and every video I ever did on the subject of tithing unless it lines up with this. I've, I've done some corrective teaching in the, in, the, in the last 10 years, but not to the degree of what we're getting ready to do now. Then he now said, religion, religion uses two things. Number one, huh? fear. And number two, guilt. That is what religion does. So why is this important? Because religion is sustained by two factors, fear and guilt. And that is why any message on the rapture that is asking you if you are rapturable, it is still part of that wickedness. It is still in the same segment with Titan. Now, And if it's one subject that the church has used for a long time, to keep people in fear and guilt, it is in that subject of tithing. And it has to be corrected, and it's gotta be corrected now. I may lose some friends, preachers may not ever invite me no more, but I think I've already been through that, so it doesn't matter. We are not saying giving is not good. You must understand. Well, there is no point wasting time. 
explaining something to somebody who has decided to argue. When he receives wato wato, his eyes will clear. The same fear and guilt is what all these proponents of heaven at last are using. The same fear and guilt is what all these prominence of are you rapturable because the whole intent is to drive fear and make you guilty because religion will use fear and guilt to manipulate. Once you are not afraid, nobody can manipulate you. Once you are not guilty, nobody can manipulate you. So in order for me to, to, uh, to, to, to make profit and use you as merchandise and use you as a product, as a commercial article, I must strike you with fear and strike you with guilt. Then all your defenses are down. Then I can manipulate you. That's what the teaching on Titan does. Because the teaching on tithing tells you, if you don't pay tithe, devourers will come after you. The teaching on tithing tells you, if you don't pay tithe, things will be tight. The teaching on tithing tells you, that if you don't pay tithe, you know God is against you, you cannot be blessed. The teaching on tithing tells you, that your security and protection in life, is tied to you paying tight. The teaching on tithing tells you that even your children and family will not be sick if you pay tithe. Now, so they, they put fear on you so that even if your car break down, what you are thinking of is maybe I didn't pay tight or maybe I didn't pay the tight well. So religion must put on you a burden and a yoke that you are not able to bear. Religion is ever learning and never able to come to the truth. Nobody says you shouldn't give. How can you not give if you are born of God? For God so loved the world that he gave. How can you have the same nature with God and it will not find expression in deeds of kindness and generosity? We do not give because we are manipulated. We give because we have grown. We give because we have matured. We give because we have discovered our identity that within our DNA is generosity. So we give as responsible children of God for the work of God. We give as people who love the people of God to support brethren. The teaching on tithing, the teaching on tithing has to be totally, totally revamped all over the body of Christ. Because the church is built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus himself being the cornerstone. Which means what the apostles didn't teach and what the prophets didn't teach in the book of Acts right into the epistles the church of jesus is not supposed to teach it and the church of jesus is not supposed to practice it and brother peter called it a yoke that neither we or our fathers could bear so when you come to the book of acts what you begin to see is the nature of god finding expression without anybody teaching people are selling houses People are selling lands. People are selling properties. And they are bringing the monies and they are laying it at the apostles' fish, feet. And distribution is made. The saints that are poor are taken care of. The work of God is taken care of. Nobody is teaching it because it is in the DNA of a man that is truly born of God. He doesn't need to be manipulated. No percentages for a believer. We've been saying this for years. And let me tell you the truth. If you are yet to wake up, brother, the day has broken forth. In the body of Christ, step by step, all of these things that they are fighting us for, Jesus will hit them. Their eyes will open. They will apologize. And we forgive them. And we keep pushing the gospel. Amen. As Never too late. Yeah, no, but you know, it's not something that we do every day on the program, but when it happens, uh, I think we should also roll along with it. And talking about that, uh, Crayful Dollar, um, there was a video of Crayful Dollar on the internet. Global by it. I know you get to see everything. <laughs> I saw it before the video came out. Oh. So, but what do you make of it? Well, it's, it's, it's a good thing. I'm, I'm proud and I'm happy that Crayful you know, Krefla is one of those voices that was very loud on the materialistic gospel. It was very loud on it because 
uh, you know, I'm conversant with Creflo Dollar's ministry. But I'm so happy that he is transiting. He himself said, I'm still growing. Mm. So let people give him the opportunity to continue growing, you know, and, uh, you know, open up to what he's teaching and learn and listen carefully, you know, and as they listen, they should check their scriptures along with him. And I'm just excited that, you know, um, it's beginning um, at such a level and we are not going to keep quiet. We're going to keep shouting it and preaching it until the whole world comes to this true knowledge of the gospel of Christ.